It's summer, and it's time for the family reunion cookout. You've got burgers and hot dogs on the grill. Soda in the cooler. Running through the sprinkler to stay cool. Except there's one problem. You didn't check the weather. Guess you'll be ordering delivery. The weather is an important aspect of our lives. It impacts many things here on Earth. From travel, to the backyard cookout, to shipping and deliveries. There are even times when weather closes schools. Think about when you have snow days. With all that being said, how do we keep track of all that's going on? How do we know when it's going to be safe to fly a plane? or when it's fine to schedule a cookout, or when to close a school ahead of a big blizzard. Well it's simple. We simply check the weather report. Weather reports are made by special scientists called meteorologists. Or more simply put, the weatherman. Meteorologists study meteorology, which is the science of the weather. A meteorologist is a weather scientist. These scientists use special equipment to help them make accurate forecasts and predict the weather with relative accuracy. Let's take a look at some of the equipment that meteorologists use to measure and record weather conditions. Large weather conditions can be monitored using radar or even satellites. Radar images can be used to detect lots of things. For example, cloud cover, rainfall, storm location or intensity and cloud movement. Radar can also be used to predict the potential for severe weather, for example, hurricanes or tornadoes. Wind speed is measured using an anemometer. I'll say that word again. Anemometer. Wind speed is measured because it is a great indicator for changes in atmospheric flow. When the wind speed increases or rapidly decreases for a sustained period of time, the overall weather conditions of the air mass are probably going to change very soon. And just for reference, air mass just means a large portion of air in a particular area that has a uniform or single characteristic. Wind direction is measured using a wind vane, also known as a weather vane. These have different designs, but they all serve the same purpose. They show the direction that the wind is coming from. This also means that they can indicate which way an air mass is flowing from. For example, if the weather vane says that the wind is flowing from the east, that means the air mass is also coming from the east. A wind sock can also tell you the direction that the wind is coming from, but with the added benefit of knowing the overall intensity of the wind. The straighter the wind sock, the stronger the wind. Now let's just take a moment to address something important. If the wind is coming from the east, that doesn't mean the wind is flowing east. If it's coming from the east, that means it's flowing or traveling west. In general, the wind won't return to the direction it came from. Okay, now let's continue on. Perhaps the most well-known weather tool is the thermometer. It measures a change in temperature. If temperature is changing, that means the air mass in the area is changing. Next is humidity. Humidity is a measure of the percentage of water vapor in the air. Increased levels of humidity can be associated with a high probability of precipitation and is typically measured with sling psychrometers. Humidity can also be measured with a hygrometer. The last key element of weather data is the air pressure. Air pressure is measured with a barometer. Measuring air pressure is important because it can be the single greatest indicator between clear skies and hazardous conditions. A rise in air pressure indicates fair weather while a fall in pressure indicates stormy weather conditions advancing. Now even though meteorologists use several tools to predict weather patterns, there are also other things that can be used to forecast the weather. Everyone knows dark clouds mean that it's probably going to rain, but did you know that each type of cloud has a name and specific characteristics? 
Cirrus clouds are high and wispy and signal fair weather or an approaching warm front. Cumulus clouds are puffy with flat bottoms and signal fair weather. However, when they are darker, they may signal rain or thunderstorms as they develop into cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds are the tallest clouds. They can be over 60,000 feet tall. Cumulonimbus clouds are what causes the more devastating weather conditions such as hail and tornadoes. Stratus clouds are spread over a large area and are layered. Usually they don't really cause any changes to the weather besides lower temperature due to less sunlight, but if they start to stack, they can cause problems. As these clouds thicken, long periods of precipitation can occur over the area where the clouds are located. This could lead to higher chances of mudslides and flash flooding. To keep track of all the clouds, scientists use satellites. Satellite images are used for seeing cloud patterns and movements. For example, hurricane clouds and movement can be observed using satellite images. Satellites can also track cloud movement over land and look to see from above if a storm is breaking up or getting stronger. So recapping all of that, between using equipment like satellites to monitor the shapes of clouds and various weather tools, meteorologists are able to predict weather patterns. Radar can detect incoming clouds and storms. Wind speed is measured by an anemometer. Wind direction is measured by either a wind vane or a wind sock. Thermometers tell you when it's hot or cold by measuring the temperature. Whenever you're sweating a lot, it's probably best to use a sling psychrometer or hygrometer to measure the humidity level. And possibly most important is the barometer. The higher the reading of air pressure, the better chance that you'll see clear skies. Speaking of clear skies, cirrus clouds are going to be a sign of good weather to come. But cumulo and stratus clouds could lead to rain in your future. While all of this may seem like a lot for one video, it just goes to show how important meteorologists are to us. They take all of this information from all of these different tools, and they put it together on a nice and neat weather map to show to us on the 6 o'clock news. Let's give our weathermen a hand. If you learned anything from this video or felt like it was educational, don't forget to leave us some love. We put a lot of work into it, and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks.